Hey guys, welcome to the Pandemic Pinup Happy Hour. We are doing barbecue themed cocktails today. Um, just a few notes before we get started. I definitely do this for purposes of not being bored in quarantine. I need suggestions. I'm creatively lagging lately this week. So if there is something you'd like to learn, something you have at home that you don't know how to use, or some crazy challenge or dare that you would like to send my way, please do. So you can reach out to me on the Underground Cooking Club page through the Pandemic Kind of Happy Hour Facebook group, or you can message me personally on Facebook as well, or on Instagram or whatever social media you communicate with. Um, today, I will, even though it's supposed to be barbecue themed cocktails, the entire concept for the class today came about because a colleague of mine asked me if I thought I could use barbecue sauce in an actual cocktail. And I told him, I'm not sure, we'll see what happens. And I actually came up with something that I'm absolutely impressed by, but also overwhelmingly upset that it's tasty. I didn't want to really go the route that I've seen done with barbecue sauce and Bloody Marys. I thought it was a little bit of a cop out. So I got a little creative. Um, but yeah, I know the weather, it was supposed to be all sunny this weekend and then Hurricane Hannah hit. So I don't know where you guys are, but I got rained out twice this weekend. So hopefully your weather gets better. And all of these cocktails will be great for indoors or outdoors, but they will definitely help reduce the heat and great when you're grilling. So we're gonna be making three cocktails as we do. And the first one we're gonna make is actually a mocktail. I wanna say this is the first time I've done a mocktail on the class. Um, just in case you are watching on Facebook, uh, you are able to jump in the Zoom room. There's a link on the Underground Cooking Club page if you'd like to join. If you wanna stay in the shadows, that's fine as well. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to just leave them. I'm trying to juggle technology. And if I don't get to name your questions, I'll be sure to message you after the class. But I wanted to start with a mocktail because it is hot outside. And I know some people choose to stay sober, um, whether because of quarantine issues or just personal choice. But this is actually a cocktail, or sorry, mocktail, gotta get into the group. The mocktail that we're going to make, I designed specifically after doing some research on um, to manage your body temperature. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I've done a lot of outdoor bartending where I'm at a concert or at a cookout or something like that. And it just gets really, really hot. And you usually have to be in full uniform and now you have to wear masks outside. So I still think this is a great cocktail. What it does is it has a lot of lemon and a lot of ginger. And the ginger helps your body heat stay lower and regulate to a normal level. And the lemon balances the pH within your system. I would like to clarify that this mocktail is absolutely delicious with alcohol. But if you aren't being sober or just need something to beat the heat, which is the name of the rock tail, then you can do this alcohol free. Very simple to make, and it's very, very flexible to add flavors to, which is one of my favorite things about this entire project. I try to keep most of the cocktails and things that we do and in this class flexible. So if you don't have these ingredients at home, or if you can't find something in the store, then you're able to substitute things quite easily. So for this cocktail, or mocktail, I'm going to keep doing that all day. I've got cocktails on the brain. I'm going to have one here in a little bit. But you're going to need an ounce and a half of lemon juice. And we've had conversations many, many times about fresh versus bottled. Fresh is always going to taste better, but if you don't have it, that's fine. So I'm using fresh today, but I'm using an ounce and a half of lemon juice. And then on the flyers that I put out every week, there'll be little recipes you can make that will help you make these cocktails. And one of the ones from this week is a ginger agave syrup. And we're gonna be using that to sweeten our cocktail. I'm gonna use a three quarter ounce. And you could do this with a ginger simple syrup, but I find that the agave one is less sweet. So you're able to get more ginger, but less sweet. So you can up your quantities a little more. If you were using just basic simple syrup with ginger, then I would probably do a half ounce so it's not overly sweet. And that's the base of our cocktail. Now, this is where the flexibility comes in. I'm gonna add raspberries to mine. I love the ginger lemon raspberry. I've also done it with cucumber and blackberry. I've done it with strawberries, it's really nice. Or if you just like regular lemonades with a little kick, then don't add any berries here or any other fruit. But I'm gonna put in, let's see, oh, let's say five raspberries. 
And you can muddle them if you do want to. I like to just shake things really hard so I can see pencils to play because I'm lazy. And so I'm gonna put those in here, very simple. So far we have three ingredients. And I'm gonna add ice to my shaker. And we're gonna shake this for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now you can choose to strain this if you would like it to be a lot smoother, especially if you're gonna add alcohol. Sometimes people don't like texture in their cocktails. I personally love when I get some crushed berries and leave them in the cocktail because it's like having tiny little snacks in between all my little sips. So I'm not going to double strain this cocktail. I'm just gonna regular strain it. I'm also gonna add in a few splashes of club soda. You could use sparkling water, you could use mineral water, sorry, sparkling mineral water is good. Sparkling water or ginger beer. You could also use like a Sprite if you have that on hand. I'm gonna put some ice in my cup. I lost my ice scoop this week. So this is my new quarantine method of putting ice in things. One ice at a time is being nice. Just so I don't have any cold water for that weather, I'm using my hands. My hands are clean for the record. But okay, so I'm gonna just use a regular hot air strainer. Strain this directly over my ice. It's nice and slow. And you can also serve this without a sparkling element. I've done it sometimes with just adding plain water instead of sparkling water or soda. And it works just as well. Really nice and refreshing. And I'm gonna garnish this with a lemon wheel. Usually I don't get to garnish this. This goes in a giant Yeti cup and that's it. If you do make it without alcohol though, it freezes really nicely. So sometimes I like to put it in reused water bottles or something and then put them in the freezer and then pull them out shortly before I want to drink them and then shake them so they get nice and slushy. So that's also really nice. But all right, very simple guys. That is called Beat the Heat. And it should help you maintain your body temperature at a lower grade or a lower degree. And that way you can stay outside longer and enjoy the wonderful weather that hopefully you're having wherever you are. So I'm gonna put this over to the side. Got some popping into the classroom. Ooh, the person who challenged me to make the cocktail. <laughs> Fantastic. Let me make sure I stay based and cool. All right. So for our second cocktail, I'm actually going to make the one that has the barbecue sauce in it. So few things that are good to know. Um, the barbecue sauce, if you're just like tuning in and didn't see the prep list, this is gonna sound absolutely wild that I'm putting barbecue sauce into this cocktail. But what I actually did was I took a barbecue sauce, just a regular bot barbecue sauce. I think it was Kraft brand honey barbecue, I think. And I took Dr. Pepper and I reduced them. I've mixed them together in a pan and I reduced them down until they acquired a texture similar to the barbecue sauce that I originally started with. So I chose to do that because I really thought that the flavors of the Dr. Pepper, rather than like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or anything else, would make the barbecue sauce a little bit more malleable in cocktails. Um, I did try a few with direct barbecue sauce. And if you're buying barbecue sauce, it's kind of hit or miss. Some of them can be really tangy. Some of them can be really, really sweet. And so I chose one that I liked and then added this Dr. Pepper and it still tastes like barbecue sauce. Do not have any worries about that. It is very much barbecue sauce. But I wanted to show you the texture before we get started in case you do follow this along and get brave at home and try to make your own barbecue sauce, Dr. Pepper reduction. That way you don't go too far on reducing it down. So this is my reduced barbecue sauce. As you can see, it's a little less thick than barbecue sauce, but it's also thicker than simple syrup. So it's kind of a fine line, but I, if it's a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner, the cocktail will still work, trust me. So I used 
craft honey barbecue. I think this would work really nicely if it had a smokier barbecue sauce. I didn't want to have like 18 different barbecue sauce reductions. So I just tried it with the one I have on hand. Um, my local HEB, which is the grocery store here in Texas, has some phenomenal um, barbecue sauces that are regional. So you can get like a Kentucky style, a Tennessee style, a Texas style. Because let's be real, the South will fight all day about barbecue styles, who does it better, which ones taste more delicious. Um, obviously, I'm biased because I'm in Texas, but try it out with whichever one you like the most and then go from there. And if you don't want to use Dr. Pepper, I honestly didn't do it because it's excellent. I thought it just had a better flavor profile because it's more complex in its actual makeup than Pepsi or Coca Cola. Uh, but try it, I don't know, maybe with cream soda or you find a different kind of soda. Maybe you do it with a lavender or a cucumber and try to add some stuff to it. But we're going to make this cocktail, guys. I'm really excited about how good this turned out. So to make this cocktail, we're going to start with a shaker and we're gonna just go ahead and put this barbecue sauce in here. So we get that out of the way. We're not thinking about it anymore, but we're just gonna think about how delicious this is gonna taste. So you're gonna use a half ounce of your barbecue sauce and Dr. Pepper reduction. Okay, I'm gonna put that in my shaker. Okay, then we're gonna use half ounce of orange juice. And then we're going to use a half ounce of simple syrup. This is the one thing that I will say is much to taste because depending on the barbecue sauce you use or how thick your reduction ended up being, you may or may not need less, more, or none at all of the simple syrup. So I'm going to do a half ounce of simple syrup and a whole ounce of fresh lemon juice. All right, now we get to the good stuff. We're going to use a half ounce of peach liqueur. And we're going to be basing this cocktail on whiskey. I chose a Canadian blended whiskey. This would be good with a rye. I do not recommend it, however, with a bourbon. I tried it with a bourbon and it was too sweet. So the blended is like a good mix. If you want it to add a little bit more of a spice note to it in the back, that I would definitely recommend using with rye. Also really good with tequila. Highly recommend aged tequila or mezcal. If you're really into the smokiness, then do some smoky barbecue sauce, use some mezcal and see what happens. So it's gonna be an ounce and a half of your whiskey. And then I'm gonna add some ice to the shaker again. And we're going to shake this one for about 15 to 20 seconds. You really want to make sure you get as much of this integrated as possible, and we are going to focus right now. So it's about 20 seconds. Okay. All right. I'm going to put some ice in my glass. I'm using a double rocks glass. You could use a regular rocks glass, a highball as well. I encourage you to try this at home. Taste it. And then once you're on my barbecue cocktail train, batch it because it's super, super tasty. So I am going to double strain this just to be sure. Right over this ice. Right. And it's going to have, depending on your barbecue sauce and your whiskey, the color of the cocktail should range from like a deep golden, like beige to a light brown, but like a warm brown. All right. Put that. That. Put that over here. And I decided since this is supposed to be a cocktail for the grill, Putting like a little seared peach. Mainly because I didn't want to light my whole grill with one peach, but I highly recommend grilling these rather than searing them. All right, guys, this is the cocktail known as Lost in the Sauce. 
designed especially for Woody Latour. Um, it's actually really good. I hope he makes it at home and then tells me what it looks like. So good. I'm upset at how good this is. <laughs> it's really tasty. All right. And to close us out today, I'm super pumped about this last recipe. And the reason I'm super pumped about this recipe is because I feel like the ratios are really easy to understand. And it's going to enable everyone at home to take whatever your favorite cocktail is and make it into a snowball. So what we made ahead of time, if you were not prepared with the actual list, all of these recipes are on the fire, but I am basically making, it's called a snow dough, kind of just my playful way of calling this a snow cone Paloma. So Paloma means dove in Spanish and that's where the name comes from. I really like this cocktail that we used to have or that they have at the restaurant I was working at before COVID happened. And it's something that we used to call, or they call the soil dove. And it's a Paloma recipe with a little added oomph into it, just a little more depth of flavor. We added some tea and some blackberries and it's just a beautiful cocktail, probably one of my favorite ones I've ever had. So inspired by that and how much I miss working there, I kind of took a page from that book that I used to work on and wanted to create the snow cone. So we have in the prep list, a tea infused grapefruit simple syrup. And I wanna say I said tea of choice. So just so y'all know, my tea of choice for this would be Earl Grey breakfast tea. I tried this with a couple other ones and I just felt like the Earl Grey with those bergamot notes really accented or accentuated the grapefruit really nicely. And then this, and a regular simple syrup, this is a little bit richer. It's not quite a rich simple syrup, which is a two to one ratio, two of sugar, one to water. This is, I think, I think the ratio was a one and a half. So it's a little bit richer, but not too rich. So the reason I did that is because we are making snow cones. So I wanted it to be closer to a syrup, but not so rich that it's too sweet. So what I would encourage you to do, you can make these two orders in a shaker, good to go. If you're going to make this with any other cocktail, what you want to do is take like your juicy elements or your fresh flavored element, whether it's orange juice, whether it's celery, whether it's cucumber, try and make those into this syrup using the ratios that were provided in the prep chart. And then once you have your syrup, you can batch how many snow cones you want to make. And you can use a shaker, but I'm going to use a little, it's like a flask, I think it's the 200 milliliter glass flask thing that I have. And I'm using this because my pour spout that I use for like regular bottles fits in here. Gotta finagle it, but it fits. So I would recommend if you have any of like your liquor bottles or something that ends up being empty, repurpose it for snow cones. That way you have a really nice way to pour the syrup instead of trying to make sure you get it all over the ice pouring it out of your shaker. So I'm going to put all of my ingredients directly into the flask as opposed to the shaker, but you can use a shaker. So for the snow cone, I'm going to use two ounces of syrup. And this, this is going to be the ratio you use for one snow cone. So very carefully, probably should have brought a funnel, but here we go. I'm going to put that in there. So whatever syrup you're using, whether it's a jalapeno lime syrup, maybe a spicy margarita snow cone, or maybe it's a cranberry orange, if you wanna do maybe a sex on the beach snow cone, but you're gonna use two ounces of your syrup. And then you're gonna use an ounce and a quarter of your alcohol. In this case, I'm using aged tequila. The reason you don't wanna use more than that, you can, but your ice, and your snow cone will melt much, much faster. So I recommend an ounce and a quarter. You can do a little less too if you're trying to take it easy. Um, I wouldn't do less than an ounce though, or less than a three quarter ounce, just because you do want that flavor to come through. That's also why I'm using an aged tequila. And I'm gonna use a quarter ounce of lime juice. And the reason I'm doing that is because the main citrus note that I wanted to base on grapefruit ends up mellowing out when you cook it or you make a simple syrup. So this is just to help it brighten up a little bit. Okay. And then if you were here for class last week, I walked everybody through how to make a saline solution 
which is essentially a fancy bartender way of adding pinches of salt. So if you have your saline solution at home, you're going to just use two drops. If you don't have a saline solution, you can use a pinch of salt. And if you don't have that, you can just skip it. It's just going to help balance the flavors a little bit better. So I'm going to put my cap on this and shake it. No ice. If you're doing this in your shaker, also for no the ice. You don't want to dilute this cocktail because it's going to sit on ice for quite a bit. So we're just shaking the ingredients together. And if you have snow cone cups, I looked all over and could not find any that were sold in a package of like 200. And I don't think I need 200 snow cone cups. But if you don't have snow cone cups, I'm just using a little martini glass. You want something that can hold about eight ounces of crushed ice. So, moment of truth. We're going to see if my crushed ice held up. I hope so. I think it did. So, my trick to snow cone ice at home, I don't have a snow cone maker or snow cone ice shaver or anything else. So, I take sonic ice and I either crush it with a mallet or I put it in the bowling bin. So, I'm going to just fill this crushed ice. All right, so we have a nice little mountain of snow cone ice. Then I'm going to put my little pour spout into my flask and make a snow cone. And you, I like to actually have something that'll hold mine. I don't have a really great snow cone cup, but I figured this would do in a pinch. I put a little more ice on there. There we go. And now I'm going to garnish it with a giant grapefruit slice and serve it with a tiny little spoon and a straw. Because why not? This looks a little excessive, but. It's going to be super tasty. So that is a snow cone. Mm. That's really good. I want to say my second favorite flavor to do these of, though, is vodka cherry limeades with actually using a Luxardo cherry syrup as opposed to like a cherry liqueur. Those are also really, really nice. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Um, those are the three cocktails. We did the mocktail, we did the barbecue sauce cocktail, and now we have a snow cone. So I hope if you've got good weather, you get out there and try some of these and sit outside and let them cool you down. I hope you'll tune in next week and come back for more. I'm not really sure what exactly tomorrow or what exactly is coming next Sunday, but I should go by tonight after I do some more experimentation with the rest of Monday. So thank you for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time. And if you're on Facebook, then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the live. And if there's any questions I missed, please feel free to reach out. Have a great rest of your Sunday.